pretty much up there in, in space, mm -hmm. the brain and the heart. It's really, it's a fascination that does not, um, that does not go away. Mm -hmm. I am myself a lawyer, I have to talk every day to engineers and they only accept you and you understand them if you get a little bit into their world. Naturally, as a coordinator, you have to talk to everyone a bit. So one of the main interfaces are the project managers and the mission managers. These are very interesting people engineer scientists and I have to talk to them in order to know how far we are in the project, what are the main issues, problems, good things. I have to talk to other institutions and uh, directorates and offices inside ESA because Earth Observation is not alone, we have to coordinate also outside our own directorate. And I have to talk to a lot of people outside ESA, that is partner organizations like the European Union or UMETSAT which is the organization exploiting meteorological data in Europe. Uh, and our member states, of course. That's the, maybe the most important thing for me on a daily basis, to keep the contact with the delegations of our member states. The first time I was sitting in front of our member states chairing a meeting, or to be technically correct, being the secretary of a meeting. And you have that really like you see it in, in TV, you have these long round tables with all the little flags of the different member states and you have the delegates behind the flags and you sit in front, you have a little bell to start the meeting and everything is recorded. And the first time I was sitting there in front of this huge table, um, having to run a meeting, that was certainly an exciting moment. preparing for the future, you have to be sure that in 10, 15 years, 20 years, a certain space infrastructure is available. And for this, you have to prepare today, or better, yesterday. I had a tough time deciding what to study, because astronomy was my first answer. But I had to realize that I'm not the, the type of person who, who loves to do physics and mathematics. I like it as a topic to read about it in the evening, for example, um, but I don't want to spend my life with that. And I'm much more somebody who likes to talk, who likes politics, history, etc. And so I went into law because it's a basic study. Uh, when you're a lawyer, you can work everywhere, basically. And I thought maybe there is a door into the aeronautical world. After ISU, I applied for a young graduate traineeship at ESA. That's a one year traineeship they offer. And I got selected uh, and um, eventually then stayed in ESA, um, which happened, I have to say. You have to meet the right people, you have to perform. You have to be a bit lucky, of course, as well. I mean, it's a lot of things coming together, but most of all, you need to want it. And, um, and then it, it worked out in my case, and I'm very happy about it. Earth observation, um, that yeah, can be open was a, a coincidence. That was the position which was open. And in the beginning, I was not so much um, knowledgeable about Earth observation. It took a while. Today, I'm finding it the best place in ESA because there's every day something new. We look down on our blue planet and it's, this blue planet is full of life and full of good and dramatic things at the same time. So every day is something new and you really have the feeling you do something very useful watching Earth from space, preparing for a future um, that we have to live, that we have to better manage in a way or another. You cannot be a good lawyer in a space agency if you have no clue about space, if you're not interested in rockets, in satellites, in space science, if you don't know uh, abbreviations we use in the space world, if you, if you cannot stand scientists, then you're in the wrong place in ESA. There were ESA uh, staff, ESA people in Salzburg giving a presentation. And I, as a boy, walked up to them afterwards and I got their business card. And I kept this business card on my desk for years and years during my study times. So I said, one day I want to have an ESA business card with my name on it. 
And when I got my first ESA business card, I remember I had this moment of holding it in my hand when it arrived by internal mail service. And I looked at it and said, wow, um, now a long way uh, comes to, to an end, so to say, um, in the sense that now I'm there. Now I'm there and now I can work.